Hello and welcome friends to another session in the mind grid. How many times have you run into a problem where you're going from Python 2 to Python 3 and you face problems? And strings is one such area where there are lots of problems because there are differences. If you have faced these sorts of problems, then this episode should be of great help. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how strings are made up of um, characters and formatting these characters and encoding these characters and so on. And that will break down why there are so many issues when developers go from Python 2 to Python 3. So um, as a primer, before we get down to the nitty gritty details of what Python 2 or Python 3 does, Let's look at ASCII. ASCII is one of the formats um, that has been used to store characters or um, convert strings um, from bits and bytes. So here you can see that an ASCII table shows you all characters from 0 to 127, and that's their code point, right? So the code point represents a sequential number that goes from 0 to 127, and for each one of them, there it's equivalent character like zero is a null and like 10 is a line feed and 20 is a device control and so on and so forth like um, decimal 48 is the number zero um, and like um, decimal I believe um, if you look for a small a uh, 60 decimal 97 is the character small a and a decimal 65 is the cap uh, character capital a so um, this was a uh, what Python 2 uses to represent strings. Strings are naturally ASCII encoded, and so they are naturally byte-wide. Next, we look at, you know, because the ASCII characters are only up to 127, the remaining bit in that byte can be used to encode other characters. And so various kinds of encodings emerge, and based on which encoding you're using, these characters could be different and their values could be different, right? So this became a problem, and therefore it led to the um, evolution of format, um, character format called Unicode. And inside Unicode, you can see that the characters were kind of encoded in some very strange way, and you might ask, why was it done in this such a complicated way? And it'll become clear to you when you realize that it supports up to a million and some change characters. A million characters is how big UTF-8 Unicode support is. It's no longer the ASCII that supported 128 characters. It has other, um, uh, I guess, sections of code representation, which we call code point. So from 0 to 7F, there is a byte representation beyond 7f, which is 80 to 7ff, there are two bytes used. So you can see right away that part of this um, uh, ASCII representation was the same, a byte, but the other part, which was you know, the 128 to 255, that's represented by two bytes. And so it's bigger in representation. Then there are, beyond that, there are three bytes that represent these code points, like from 800 to FFFF, right? And there are 61K, uh, roughly 61K code points there. And then when you go past, you know, the hex 10,000 to hex 10 FFFF, which is up to a million characters, then you can see that this is three bytes, sorry, four bytes. And so um, there are different sizes and different representations. Now, just as a demonstration, if you look at the character dollar in UTF-8, this um, character is represented at a code point of hex 0024. And so this is the code point, 24 is its code point. And like I said, this is like a serial number. And so if all the characters were ordered by a serial number, this would be their code point. But when you think about the conversion into an encoding, the encoding was either a one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, and so you can see that this was this one was one byte. If you look at a pound, pound is represented by A3, and A3 became C2A3, which is two bytes. 
if you look at let's say this character for i believe this is euro and euro is 20ac that's its code point and then if you look at euro on the hex utf8 it's e282ac right and finally you look at this character i don't know what that is but whatever that is hex 10348 um, and this turns into, you know, F0908D88. So you can see that Unicode is capable of supporting a million characters, but at the same time, its encoding is not uniform. It has this efficiency built in based on the most common characters still encode as bytes, but the other characters, as you start using those characters, the um, <clears throat> there are more bytes used when you try to store that same um, string either to a disk or you want to transmit this across a wire and so on and so forth, right? So you will see that there, this is not just a fixed encoding because if you always used four bytes, this would be highly inefficient um, because all the ASCII would be represented by four bytes. So it's a variable uh, encoding, a variable width encoding scheme, and it has so many characters. So now you might ask, like, you know, when Python 3 came out in 2008, why did Python 3 choose Unicode and not stay with ASCII? Um, the reason is that, you know, developers were running into issues with compatibilities and so on. So it had been probably on their to-do list to do this conversion. And when Python 3 came out, it was a uh, big enough um, code change and, um, so they actually picked up um, string uh, representation or Unicode representation in Python 3.0 in 2008, right? So that's a little bit of the history um, and uh, philosophy behind why Python 3 did what it did. Now let's take a quick peek at the internals. And so from um, its um, internals, you can see that str type, which was used in Python 2 could support text and bytes. They were essentially the same thing. You could use them interchangeably. Whereas when you went to Python 3, these are separate and quite incompatible. And text is text and bytes are bytes. They're not the same thing. And text or string is now a Unicode in Python 3. And bytes are just bytes and they are used for serialization. You, can, you don't have to convert to string. You just keep them as bytes, they are just a byte of data. And if you want to keep them as bytes, you can write them to disk as bytes. You never have to convert to a string. You never have to convert to a character. Just think of bytes as a completely different object um, and or a byte string as completely different object. And it can just directly be converted into, um, into um, you know, just a disk Right, written to disk or transmitted. Now, if you have a bunch of bytes, if they were correctly encoded, you can also decode them into um, um, appropriate strings. So we'll look at that next. <clears throat> so now here you can see, uh, like we were showing their code points, and here I show you a, um, a bunch of characters from Stargate. And in Stargate, you can see that they have a whole bunch of these alien characters. And so think of, this central thing, which is a string representation. <clears throat> that string representation is representing a character here. And the character or the string is this abstract representation inside our head of what we would draw this out as. But inside a machine, there are two formats. One is its sequential code point, which is how many characters you have. You sequentially number them and you get this thing called as a code point. Right. So one side, you have this number inside a computer that can be called a code point. The other side is a representation inside a computer for its efficient encoding. And like we showed, the Unicode UTF-8 had this variable length encoding. And so in this case, this character O with a little um, carrot on top is C393, uh, hex C393 when you encode it or when you decode, you get this character. Right. On the other side, if you want to get to the code point, which is sequential number or integer representing this character, then that number is 211 or D3. So um, that's something that now we uh, should understand that what are the methods and ways by which we can convert from one to the other format. If you were to deal with strings, 
please remember how to encode, decode them, right? And what is ORD and what is CHR? And CHR is going from this code point to this character, or it is when you go from a character back into the integer uh, code point. Whereas on the other side is the efficient representation via encoding and decoding. So here's an example. If you take a string um, with you know, two characters, first it represents a code point backslash XD3, which is this character here. And the second one is just a character A. And if I try to encode it, which is I'm going here, then I print it and I get C39361. And like you can see, C393 is just this character and A, small alphabet A is 61. So that's what we get. <clears throat> and I've already converted it to hex. So that's why it came out like this. And when I decode that back into a string and I print it, you see this character is this O with a character um, and then A, right? So now we can see that this is what we get when we encode and decode. And then the question is, why do we encode? And that reason is obvious that encoding is an efficient way of producing a very large character set, right? It's an efficient way of enhancing the character set. At the same time, creating compatibility. When you are using this UTF-8 across variety of programs and applications and and you know countries and so on, you need some way to represent characters so that it's consistent across um, you know applications and and uh, geography and so on. So that is the primary reason why the encodings came about and Python three solves that problem. But at the same time, it creates all those incompatibilities that confuse us. So once we understand this chart here, once we start to believe and understand this chart, I think things start falling in place. You need to understand what ORD and CHR do and what a code point is and what an efficient encoding of a character is. Once you start to understand these three concepts, then things start to fall um, in place and then we can find ways of solving the other things, which is conversions, right? So for conversions from Python 2 to Python 3, I have taken an example from one of my projects, and this is a case where I was doing hex to ASCII. You know, hex is coming itself as a string, and so I have to deal with that. So the hex is just characters coming in, and they are like ASCII characters, right? Because they are hex numbers are really on the low low end of the zero to one twenty eight, right? They're really the ASCII characters. So you, we know that UTF eight and ASCII is all the same when we deal with the very first set. Um, of um, bytes, right? So, so there, what I used to do was in Python 2, I would just combine two characters and build an integer. And then for that integer, I'll convert into a character and I'll store that. So that way I can convert the hex characters into a string. That was pretty straightforward, but when Python 3 came about, the CHR, because it was UTF encoded, depending on what kind of characters, like you know, I showed you earlier, that you know the character d3 became into something else. It was two bytes long, right? So if I do this, um, then I will basically get the wrong values. And so the point being that if you look into this in um, Python 3.0 or beyond Python 3, then the way to do this is that the first part is the same. I can basically convert into um, uh, a byte-wide integer once I have the byte wide integer, I do not go into this whole string business, but I go, like I said in the earlier slide, there are bytes and there are strings. I don't have to mix them. In Python 3, I have the freedom to just stay in bytes. They are not strings. So what I did was I stayed in bytes. I appended to a list where I just kept the bytes and I, then I created a byte array out of this and then I returned back the byte array. And that's all I did in Python 3. In Python 2, I actually converted that to, um, to when I got the integer out of um, you know, a set of characters like A0, B1, C2, D3, this is a byte representation. So I took two characters, created an integer, and then I converted into a character. This is the ASCII encoded string. And so in Python 2, I create an ASCII encoded string, uh, which is in a way also a byte string because for Python 2, um, strings and bytes, they are all the same. But in case of Python 3, I created it into a byte array, skipping all together all the ASCII processing and all the string processing. I just skipped all of that. And so now that you see this, 
now you can appreciate that in Python 3, because I understand that bytes and strings are different and I don't have to mix the two, I am able to solve this in this way. And in Python 2, I'm able to solve this by using the CHR method and both of them work just fine. And I can print these to um, you know, a disk or send them um, because I can iterate over every, every element of this um, return string in Python 2 and over this byte array of bytes in Python 3, and I can send them or transmit them to disk and so on. So that's it. This exemplifies how we are able to solve the conversion problems in Python. And now that we also uh, understand what a code point is, what a string is, and what its uh, encoded value in the encoded value of the uh, Unicode UTF-8 is, now I'm able to easily understand what is really happening and sometimes why when I give it a code point of one byte, I end up getting four bytes or three bytes or two bytes sometimes. And that is something that I need to understand clearly so that I can translate my code depending where I want to deal with bytes, I just deal with bytes. Where I want to deal with strings, I can efficiently transmit and encode strings and decode strings on the other side. So with that, I guess I come to the end of this episode. I hope you liked and enjoyed this episode. If you did, give me a thumbs up um, and um, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so, or leave me some comments if you think something's not right or if you want some clarifications. And I will see you very soon in another video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.